Welcome to session 3.0, Electric Motors. This EMSI training section covers energy basics on electric motors. Your presenter is Rick Mitchell. This module will give you an understanding of energy use and efficiency in motors in the residential and commercial sectors. An electric motor is an electromechanical device that converts electrical energy into mechanical energy. By electromechanical device, we mean device which combines electrical and mechanical processes. Electric motors are found in applications as diverse as industrial fans, blowers and pumps, machine tools, household applications, power tools, and disk drives. They may be powered by direct current, DC, provided by batteries or by alternating current, AC, from an inverter or electrical distribution grid. Here we'll look at motors across four aspects. Motor components, motor types, motor losses, and motor efficiency. However, it is important to note that electric motors are commonly used in industry processes to drive a separate unit like a pump, compressor, refrigeration or HVAC system. It is unlikely that you will encounter a non-integrated motor in the residential or small enterprise sector. Here we'll provide an overview of motors with more specific information located in relevant sessions to follow. Motor components. Motors have two main components, a stator and a rotor, with a number of other components such as the shaft, the bearings and the commutator. The stator is the external stationary part of the motor. It can be considered as the permanent magnet or electromagnet that houses the rotor and is usually made out of a ferromagnetic material. The rotor is the internal section which rotates inside the stator and is also composed of windings known as the armature. These are also made out of ferromagnetic material. The shaft is the object attached to the rotor which transfers the mechanical energy generated by the rotor to the external mechanism or system. A bearing is a small mechanical device that is installed inside a machine. Its main purpose is to reduce the friction between the shaft and other moving parts without creating too much energy loss. A bearing guides or constrains the motion, either linear or rotational, between the moving parts. The type of bearing depends on the load bearing its operation and the motion that it allows. A commutator is a rotary electrical switch found in some type of motors that periodically reverses the direction of the current between the rotor and the external circuit to provide a rotating force. Electric motor types. The general working mechanism is the same for all motors. An electric current in a magnetic field will experience a force. If the current carrying wire is bent into a loop, then the two sides of the loop, which are at right angle to the magnetic field, will experience forces in opposite directions. The pair of forces creates a turning torque to rotate the coil. Practical motors have several loops on an armature to provide a more uniform torque and the magnetic field is produced by electromagnetic arrangements called the field coils. This section describes the two main types of motors you should encounter in an assessment situation, DC and AC, with other motors discussed anecdotally. It is not crucial to have a high level of knowledge of motors as you will likely never have to calculate the power requirements. These are generally supplied by the manufacturer in case of an audit situation or by a specifier or technician when making recommendations. The DC motors included here are the series motor, shunt motor and the compounded motor. A brief discussion on brushed and brushless motors is also provided for general information. AC motors are comprised of the induction motor and the synchronous motor. There are a variety of other electric motor types found in industry, with induction motors occurring significantly more frequently than any other. We'll start with DC motors. DC motors, or direct current motors, operate using a direct current supply. All DC motors use the same principle of coil and magnet. The different types of DC motors are based on how the components are connected, shunt, series or compounded. DC motors are used in a variety of industrial drives such as robots, machine tools, mills and mining. They are also used extensively in automotive and railroad systems. 
In a shunt-connected DC motor, the armature and the field windings are connected in parallel. Voltage supplied to the armature is equal to the voltage supplied to the field windings. Their main application is in machinery that requires speed regulation or constant speed. For example, industrial and adjustable speed applications such as machine tools and winding or unwinding machines. In series connected DC motors, the armature and field windings are connected in series. Series connected motors are also known as universal motors as they can be powered by an AC power supply system. The current that runs through the armature is equal to the current that runs through the field windings. Their application include machinery that requires high starting torque or for higher inertia loads such as moving trains, elevators and hoists. Compound DC motors are a combination of both series and parallel connections. These systems can be designed to have both series and shunt characteristics. Their applications are usually when both high torque and speed regulation are required. Brushed DC motors are different in construction from other motors because they consist of brushes and a commutator for current switching. The motor generates the torque directly from the DC power supplied. As the motor turns, the brushes slide over the commutator and as they come into contact with it, generate a dynamic magnetic field. Advantages of a brushed DC motor include low initial cost, high reliability and simple control of motor speed. The disadvantage though is high maintenance levels which involves regularly replacing the brushes, as well as cleaning or replacing the commutator as these are prone to wear. Brushless DC motors use a rotating permanent magnet and stationary electrical magnets on the motor housing. They are more commonly used than brushed motors due to their higher efficiency and lack of brushes. They have a longer lifespan and lower maintenance cost and requirements. However, they do have higher initial costs due to their complicated speed controllers. They are used in CD players, computers, and generally in equipment where reliability and efficiency are favored over cost. An AC motor is an electric motor driven by an alternating current. It commonly consists of two basic parts, an outside stationary stator having coils supplied with alternating current to produce rotating magnetic field, and an inside rotor attached to the output shaft that is given a torque by the rotating field. There are two main types of AC motors commonly used in industry, induction motors and synchronous motors. A synchronous electric motor is an AC motor in which the rotation rate of the shaft is synchronized with the frequency of the AC supply current. Synchronous motors operate at a constant speed and a constant frequency under a steady state condition. Synchronous motors contain electromagnets on the stator of the motor that create a magnetic field which rotates in time with the oscillations of the line current. The rotor turns in step with this field at the same rate. Another way of saying this is that the motor does not rely on slip under usual operating conditions, and as a result produces torque at synchronous speed. Their advantages are accurate control in speed and position, for example, stepper motors and increased electrical efficiency when a low speed is required. Synchronous motors are mainly used in industrial applications where constant speed is required. This equipment ranges from pumps to mining equipment such as crushers, mills and compressors. One key advantage is that speed is not dependent on the torque or load as they only run at the synchronous speed. It is possible to get high torques with low starting currents. Due to their power factor correction, synchronous motors help reduce energy costs and improve the power system efficiency by correcting the power factor of installed line, making them a long-term investment. The induction or asynchronous AC motor is the most common type of motor used in industry. Induction motors operate on Faraday's electromagnetic induction principle, which states that electric current is produced in a conductor moving in a magnetic field. They are called asynchronous motors because the rotor moves at a slower speed than the stator's rotating magnetic field. The type of an induction motor depends upon number of windings. An induction motor possessing a single winding is called a single phase induction motor. This is commonly used in households where less power is required. Due to having a single winding, these motors re require auxiliary windings to start up. Three-phase induction motors are used in commercial or industrial sectors where loads are heavy. This motor can self-start because of the high number of windings. 
Asynchronous motors are used extensively in industrial, commercial and domestic applications. They are used in refrigerators, freezers, fans, washing machines and machine tools to name a few. They are mainly used to contrast speed applications but can be easily modified to include a variable speed drive to modify or control the speed. Some advantages of these motors are their low cost and maintenance and their simple design. Power to AC motors can be supplied in two different ways. Single phase is where the distribution of the alternating current using a system where a single voltage is, is supplied. They are used mainly in smaller applications or domestic use. On the other hand, three phase supply is where the currents in the conductors reach their peak instantaneous values sequentially, not simultaneously. They operate at either 400 or 415 volts and are usually used for larger electrical loads. Motor losses. Motor loss refers to the consumption of electrical energy not converted to useful mechanical energy. There are four main energy losses in electric motors. Power losses, which includes rotor and stator losses, magnetic core losses, friction, and stray losses. The graph shows the contribution of energy losses in percentages. With magnetic core losses as 25% of energy loss, stator and rotor are 35% and 25% respectively, frictional losses are 5% and stray losses are 10%. It can be deduced that most of the energy is lost in stator windings. Remember, minimizing these losses increases the efficiency of the system. Power losses include the stator and rotor losses. The main power loss is essentially the heat generated and dissipated through the motor's frame. The stator losses are due to the heating effect of current flow through the resistant stator windings. Rotor losses are due to the heating effect of current flow in the rotor. By increasing the mass of the stator and increasing the grade of steel and the size of conductor bars in the rotor, the power losses can be diminished. Stray load losses are other losses essentially due to leakage induced by load current, design flaws and manufacturing variables. Optimizing motor design and enforcing strict quality control largely diminishes the extent of stray load loss. Magnetic core losses are made up of the energy required to magnetize the laminated core. These losses include the hysteresis effects, eddy currents, and magnetic saturation. Insulation and using better materials such as a higher quality steel with high grade silicon steel can reduce losses. Friction and windage losses comprise bearing friction, wind friction, the cooling fan load, and any other source of friction or air movement in the motor. Friction and windage losses are less problematic with the use of high quality bearings and lubricants and improved fan designs. Motor efficiency. Electrical motor efficiency is the ratio between the shaft output power and the electrical input power. It is denoted by the Greek letter eta, subscript m. If power output is measured in watts, Efficiency can be expressed as being equal to power out divided by power in. Where A to M is the motor efficiency, power out is equal to the shaft power out in watts, and power in is the electric power into the motor in watts. In reality, as an assessor, you will rarely be required to calculate the efficiency of motors, as these values will be nominated by the manufacturer on the motor's nameplate or manual. Motors are engineered and selected for their precise applications. Their efficiency and power are calculated and predetermined specifically for the application, however it is always valuable to know the theory behind it. Improving motor efficiency depends on a few things, but ultimately it is up to the manufacturer to meet the efficiency requirements. A few factors affecting the efficiency include the materials used in the motor, ensuring that they are ferromagnetic and of high quality. Motor design. For example, designing a longer core and using a higher grade of steel can reduce the magnetic flux density, reducing the iron losses. Rotor losses, which can be minimized by increasing the size of the conductive bars and the end rings to reduce resistance. Stray load losses, which can be reduced by improving the internal slot geometry. Using high quality bearings is also extremely important. Operating temperature will also influence the efficiency of a motor. 
For every 10 degrees Celsius that the operating temperature rises, the life of the windings will be halved. It is important to operate the motor within the allowable operation temperatures. Again, back to motor design, the designer or manufacturer will ensure the motor is designed to operate under certain conditions. Maintenance is one aspect that the client can and should be involved in. As an assessor, you should also ensure that all manufacturer's recommendations are being followed. Providing regular maintenance to the motor will help improve efficiency as well as prolong the equipment's and system's life. Some things that you should consider when using a motor are detailed here. Always make sure that the motor being used is correctly selected and sized for the relevant application. Using the incorrect motor can damage a system and increase costs in the long term. Motors should be installed correctly as per the manufacturer's specifications. Ensure that the wiring is completed correctly. Reversed wiring will cause the motor to turn the wrong direction. The voltage and current supply should be acceptable for the motor's capacity. In general, ensure that the motor and its accessories are adequately installed, including fan cover and circuit breakers to ensure the safe performance of the machine. Remember, a more efficient motor will consume less power and produce less carbon emissions than a standard motor. Overloading a motor can cause misalignment in the actual load being driven or the shaft. It can cause the motor to vibrate and even cause the rotor to make contact with the stator, damaging the internals of the motor. Misalignment can also cause the bearings to fail or trip the overload protector on the motor, causing the motor to stop operation to prevent further damage. Motors are designed to operate at certain ambient temperatures and environments. The motor should be selected depending on the application and the environment. If an inadequate motor is installed in an environment, it is possible that the damage can be caused to the bearings. Always check the information regarding operating conditions on the motor's nameplate. Depending on the system that is being driven, a variable speed drive or a VSD can be installed to regulate the motor's work. VSDs will be discussed in more detail relevant to their specific application in the following sessions. Some motors are also subjected to energy ratings. The minimum energy performance standards, or MEPS, apply to motors manufactured or imported into Australia or New Zealand. In particular, three-phase motors with a rating of 0.73 kilowatts to 185 kilowatts must meet the minimum efficiency ratings set by MEPS and the Australian standard AS1359.5. AS1359.5 outlines the two testing methods used to measure efficiency. There are other similar international energy efficiency schemes in place to upgrade the requirements of motors. The efficiency figures can be found on the tables provided by MEPS on their website. There are some motors that do not require the MEPS and are exempt from their conditions. MEPS does not apply to the following type of motors. Single phase motors, submersible motors, integral motor gear systems, variable or multi-speed motors, short duty cycles, and rewound motors. DC motors are also not currently included in the MEPS scheme. As stated in AS 1359.5, another exemption are motors that are integral with and not separable from a driven unit. An example is a motor constructed on the same shaft as a compressor for an air conditioning unit. To qualify for an exemption under this clause, the particular motor must a share common components apart from connectors such as bolts with the driven unit, for example a shaft or housing, and b not be designed in such a way as to enable the motor to be separated from the driven unit as an entire motor that can operate independently of the driven unit. For example, to qualify, the process of separation must render the motor inoperative. An example scenario. A Toshiba 2-pole 11 kW motor has an efficiency of 91% at full load. What is its running cost based on 4,000 hours a year at 12 cents per kilowatt hour. We know that the motor uses 11.5 kilowatts at 100% efficiency, and so in practice it will use more as the efficiency decreases. So first we'll calculate the power loss. This will be equal to the motor rating multiplied by the percentage of loss, which is 100% minus 93% of efficiency. 
This is equal to 0 0.805 kilowatts. Therefore, the total power consumed is the rated power plus the power loss, which is equal to 11.5 plus 0 0.805 kilowatts, which totals 12.305 kilowatts. So we now know that the motor actually consumes 12.305 kilowatts. The total cost of operating this motor will then be equal to 12.305 kilowatts multiplied by the operating hours of 4,000 a year, multiplied by the cost of per kilowatt hour. So the total cost to the client is $5,906.40. To continue with presentations, please select Energy Session 4.0 Pumping Systems from the navigation bar. To complete the assessment for this presentation, please select Tutorial 3.0 Electric Motors.